The brisk, chilling air is calling, and out there we're free to run and jump and live so wildly. Head first, we'll go tumbling through places unknown, with nothing but the stars to light our way. And though the sun may set at night, tomorrow will look so bright. 'Cause home, home is when you're by my side. No matter what we do, together we'll see it through. And I hope.
Hey everybody, welcome to today's finals of the Western Australia High School E-League Tournament. My na- uh, I am your host, Reinhardt, and I'm also joined by my... F- Whoops, just... I could hear myself for a second there. That is absolutely my fault. But yes, to continue, I am also joined by my co-host, uh, Iridescence. Iridescence, say hi to everybody. G'day, Reinhardt. I am super excited for this uh, matchup grand final today between Elizabeth College and Calvin Christian School. Yeah, and it's looking like it's going to be a very exciting event. We've got both teams getting themselves ready and underway for game number one of today's series. Uh, today is going to be a best of three. As you can see on the screen for game number one, we're going to have ourselves with uh, Elizabeth College on the left and um, Calvin. Oh, the team? Calvin Christian. That's the one. My brain is absolutely like twisted right now. Uh, just before we actually you know, go any further, we have to do a special shout out and a very special thank you to the uh, teachers uh, who you know, who pretty much like helped with the teams uh, throughout the entire series. We also need to thank the teams for participating and making this a very great experience for everyone, or should I say really for one another and those that, you know, supported and followed throughout the entire uh, series today. And a final uh, shout out to the HSEL staff. I have to say like, without you guys, like without all of you, this would not have really been possible. And we would not really be here today with these two teams fighting it, uh, fighting it out for the grand title of the the WA HSE League uh, Grand Finals. You know who would be the uh, gold play, who would be the gold medal winner and take home you know all the goods for today. But I do have to say, iridescence. So far, this entire series has been absolutely like amazing. Like the high school teams, it's amazing how much talent we can see, and just su- like in such amount of um, young, in, you know, young viewers. Like you know that just this day and age, everything is you know the skill is just broad. Like you can see skill coming from you know children as young as you know twelve years old all the way up to the uh, elderly league. So this is absolutely amazing. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Sorry, what was that, Reinhardt? Uh, just cut out a little bit for me there. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> That's perfectly fine. Uh, as I was saying, um, you know, so far throughout this series, seeing that the high school league is still relatively new, but is absolutely rising to stardom, it's amazing how much talent we can see in such young individuals. Like, we've got the Academy League over on the international circuit. We've also recently had the high school finals happening just before the... Uh, OPL finals for the split two, and now we're seeing the WA finals, uh, you know, for the East uh, for high school esports. And it's amazing, like, how much talent we can see in such young, gifted players. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Well, look, put it this way you see these kids come up there, you know, they're better league players than I am, and you know, they put the time in around their schooling. It's amazing to see these growths, and you know, I see potential OPL players in this future, especially coming out of these high school teams right now. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. Like we need to see, like we need to see more variety with our with our you know with our player base today. Like we can't just have you know everybody who is just out of high school and whatnot. Like you know just fresh out of high school. It's just like okay, that's fine. But you know if we have a large we have a large age you know and a large age bracket. You know we've got anywhere from thirteen years old all the way up to you know the elderly league and. You know, it's amazing. Like, I thought we would only really see a lot of talented players in the elderly league. But as soon as the eSport, as soon as the high school uh, developed their own category for, uh, you know, for competition and stuff, it's amazing how many, it's amazing how many, you know, young, talented players we've got. And, you know, they're really beginning to show their skill uh, just on the rift alone. Like, you know, the solo queue really helps establish, you know, what they're like playing on their own. And then you've got, like, team-based events because... I think you can agree that team-based environments is completely separate to uh, solo-based environments because you have a team that you need to create synergy with. You need to develop, you know, team working capabilities, the ability to actually communicate with a team, um, and a couple of other, th- a couple of other things. I can't really uh, point out on the top of my, on the tip, top tip of my tongue right now, but I, I think a lot of us can, as- you know, can assume that, you know, with the team-based environment. There are a lot of things you have to factor in. It's not just, you know, you're playing in your own, you're trying to get the best KDA possible and you have other people to worry about. It's like the other people worry about you too. Like you have the ability to actually voice communicate with them. 
Yeah, exactly right. But it's not just what comes down to gaming. Like, sure, here we're here to talk about some League of Legends and have some good times on the Rift. But think about, you know, the friendships these guys would have put together playing all these games over the week. You know, they're friends that could be potentially for, uh, lies, uh, for, um, I'm sorry, friends for life. And, you know, when you can sit down with that best friend and, you know, put a couple of matches out on the Rift or play a couple of, you know, games of Counter-Strike, whatever it is you play, it's more than just esports that comes into that experience. It's a bit, you know, the camaraderie. It's yeah, it's all put together in one explosive package. Absolutely. And as our teams, our teams are beginning to get themselves all set up and ready for game to once. And I'm really keen to see, I'm really keen to see how both teams will play out tonight. Like, Throughout their entire throughout the entire series, they have performed absolutely uh, like you know stunningly well. I'm absolutely, uh, what's the word? I guess I'm really excited to see how both teams will play up against each other because both teams have done so well to uh, you know to get up to this stage today. That I'm really the key. I'm really keen to see how they're going to verse how they're going to go up against each other. And it looks like we're seeing looks like we're starting to see the other team finally make. Uh, a small appearance in the uh, lobby, in the well, should I say, the pre-game lobby? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, just a little bit of a bit of a delay that uh, they are using Pro Draft for this game. So we are going to have the three bands, uh, the three bands, three picks, and then another two bands followed by the last of the picks. There won't be any of this five-person bands right away. So hopefully, hopefully, we can see some good counterplay coming out of this draft. I hope so as well. I mean. We see it in the pro series where they have the three, the two, the three, uh, the three band, three pick, two band, two pick. That it's only it, it's only fair that we, you know we let the others experience it as well, especially in other leagues. Like we've got like the high school league, they're going to be experiencing the same scenario as what you would in the pro series. So it's really nice to get you know get the youngins uh, exposed to a similar field that they want to potentially, well, they might potentially lead into later on. And it could be a little bit nerve-wracking because, yes, you have five bands, but it's much more strategized. Like, you have three to start with, and then you go into the champion picks. And that is possibly one of the final, final stages of the game, you know, just to get yourselves all in a mindset to play today's game. I mean, if you pick the wrong champion, uh, you know, by accident, uh, well, you're, you're essentially going to have to stick with it, really, for the entire series and, well, for the entire game. And I think... Everyone usually likes playing what they're comfortable with. And in a team-based environment like this, it's pretty much going to be a collaboration as to, you know, what champion will work with what champion, you know, like a Yasuo with a couple of powerfully um, easy-to-access easy ultis, like, you know, Malphites or a like Galio or something of the sort. You know, what I, you know where I'm coming with this? Yeah, exactly right. You've got to build those team comps. But a little whisper in my ear said they're actually going to be using... Uh, a, pro, a website called ProDraft to help these guys draft out, to help you know even it out with those few people who don't quite own all the champions as yet. So we will be reading those picks and bands as they come through, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of a last-minute thing. So oh, we're not even going to get to cast it. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a surprise for everybody when we get onto the game. I'm keen for the surprise as well. Like I like things that are absolutely spontaneous and. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how it's going to work for these teams today. We are, I believe, we are playing. This is a low bracket division. Am I correct, or is this an all around category based uh, event? Iridescence. I believe it is a low bracket division. I'd have to get on that, but regardless of the division, it doesn't matter. They're here to have some fun. Exactly. That's the that's the main thing we really want to look forward to here is just being able to have fun, enjoy ourselves, and you know, when you're having fun, it doesn't matter you know who wins and who loses. It's just a matter of we came, we played, we had fun. That's all that really matters. Like the any the only extras to it is you know the the title that you know one team gets at the end of it. I mean, there is always going to be a winning team and then a team that will gain some gain some learning, you know, and a learning curve from playing today's games. Like I don't really like saying the L word because it is it is commonly known to be negative. And I like to see it as, okay, we came, we played, and we learned a little bit of something about ourselves and how we should conduct ourselves in future games. Exactly right. And you know, when it comes down to it, you know, where regardless of how, you know, your skill level, that's the whole point of these high school events. It doesn't matter how good, how new, you can sit down behind a computer, 
you know, for 30 minutes in League of Legends with a friend, where whether you're the best player on your team or, you know, a bit of an anchor, you're here to have some fun. And I can uh, watch this draft go through a little bit, and uh, there are some interesting picks coming your way in the future. What do you mean by interesting picks in the future? I can't disclose that. You're going to have to wait until we're actually into the game for oh, everybody. Leaving, leaving uh, me with a cliffhanger. Oh, uh, just, you're like the end of a TV series. or like Sorry, the end of a like, season of a TV series. You leave me on a nice tight cliffhanger, and I want to know what happens next. Exactly right. Got to keep you interested. And, uh, well, Reinhard, what do you think you might see in this game? It's really hard to tell, but... Considering it's a low bracket based uh, competition, I'm typically I would see uh, just a typical low bracket based uh, uh, champion selection. Like, you know, we try and go for what is the most, and I say this with finger quotes, overpowered champions or what's in the meta. You know, a lot of websites have actually started producing like their own, uh, I guess you could say categories. Like, you know, what are the top five champions for each, uh, each role and then like each division? And, you know, it, it can really, I guess it can really also come down to, you know, how these teams want to play it out. I mean, they could go with something completely unconventional. And that is absolutely, it's absolutely interesting to see. Like, I, I, it's really, it's a little bit hard to explain. Like, you'll see, you'll see the typical, like, you know, hard carry champions like Zed, Yasuo, LeBlanc, and champions that are, you know, that have a very powerful early game burst. And then you'll get the, you know, the unconventional champion picks. Like, Urgot has come back into the scene, which is I, interesting to see. I don't think we're going to see an Urgot, but you did mention a champion that has been picked up, and uh, it's the first time in a long time I've seen a Zed running around the Rift. He is going to be on one of the teams. I won't disclose who. Again, got to keep you guys guessing. But, you know, what do you want to see from a Zed in that mid lane? What do I want to see from a Zed? Very powerful early game. Uh, capabilities as well as the ability to be able to roam and help the rest of the team like zed is very powerful as an early game assassin especially when it comes to the mid and late game if he can single out one target especially if that target is you know um tagged by his ulti pa his ulti's passive then he could pretty much just you know that it really goes to show how powerful he can be if put in the right hands i've had some experience with him in the past and Believe me, when you go up against champion that is marked with your ulti after it's been after you've accumulated a few passive stacks, it is. I, I feel like I've just you know won a gold Emmy or something like that. Like I feel very proud of how effective that was. Like that is Zed to a hundred percent efficiency in my opinion. You want to see him running around the rift, roaming as much as possible. Now that now that all these bands have come through, and I can see them. I'm not sure if you can see them, Reinhardt, and I know the viewers can't see them. But the interesting pick here is what has been put forward to match that Zed, and it will be a Katarina. I'm just opening up. I'm just opening up the uh, potential picks and bans at the moment, and it's interesting to see. Like we won't disclose anything until we get into the actual official in-game lobby. But I'm really, I'm really keen to see what they plan to pick because I'm seeing a lot of, you know, powerful champions in this current, in this current patch. And a few of them have been, a few of them have been knocked out. And, you know, cause when they're knocked out, it really makes you think, what are they really planning at this point? What, what type of strategy, what type of team composition are they looking at going for? Exactly right. And, you know, I'm sure they've, you know, looked back on, you know, the past few games, watching the other opponents play, knocking some of them opponent picks out as well. And, you know, you know, you say they're, they're a low bracket, but I see a diamond. I'm seeing a couple of di a platinums, you know. It's, it's a mixed bag and everyone who's wanted to play. But we are done with the pro draft, so it is just... All right, so we are just received word the match can be started in just a moment, and we are into the tournament draft. Of course, we already know what's going to be picked, but now you guys get to see it. It's really, yeah, I'm really keen to see how this is going out, because so far, what they've provided here, and what will be uh, displayed very shortly for you all, it's a very interesting team comp. Like, I'm seeing a lot of uh, team viability, especially in team fights. You know, we're seeing some engage, we're seeing... Um, oh, it's it's a it's on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't think of it just yet. And I'm hoping the words will come to me. But I'm gonna ignore what I'm seeing what I'm seeing in the 
pre-game in the pre-game website and i'm going to focus on what we've got here and from what i see at the moment we have two i guess you could say four very powerful uh bands just to start with we've got two adcs off we've got aatrox gone and ever since aatrox's remodel came out or should i say officially released he has been dynamite he has been amazing Jin has been very powerful as well in this current meta, especially since they made changes to the crit chance capabilities. Like, you know, they introduced blood, um... Stormraiser. Stormraiser, that's for. the one. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm still trying to familiarize myself with the name. It, I mean, this new system, it's going to take a while for me to sort of get used to. I understand the mechanics behind it. But for champions like Jin, especially when he gets to that 100% crit chance, he is going to be an unstoppable force. Just every single bullet in his magazine is just going to crit and it's going to proc his passive all the time so he's going to have that constant burst of movement speed he's going to have that increased damage and when he gets to that final bullet well you don't really want to be near him when that final bullet is about to go off because well if you're low it's going to be lights out exactly right but one of the most interesting things here are the pickups a darius and Udyr just gets locked in alongside the Tristana in the bottom lane. So both teams have decided to pick their AD carries first, uh, but only one support has been taken, as well as, well, Velkos taken away. That must be a comfort ban. It, I guess it has to be. I, it's just... You, you're better off going with the comfortable bans because you want to have a comfortable game. Like, you want to have a comfortable game. Like the last thing you want to have is a very stressful game because the champion you don't want played or put on the enemy team, you'd rather have it banned out. Like personally, I don't like seeing champions like Master Yi in a game or like a Graze because it really puts it can put me on edge, especially when you know they start building those items. Because some champions only come online when they've gotten those two item build up sometimes, and when they get those items, it just really puts you in sort of a, a sticky situation. You know, you want to be more careful. You don't want them invading you're only limited you're very limited on your warding capabilities especially in the early game the lane phase you know each person has to mind their own lane if you're in the jungle you're only really you have very limited warding capabilities and yet you've got a lot of entry points you've got two in the top half of the map you've got two in the bottom half of the map but as well you have to think about the fact that they uh, what type of champion they might be playing you know, they, a lot of champions that are really good in the jungle have the ability to actually jump over landscapes. And that means, like, you know, a Talon being able to jump over a wall, for example. You know, his parkouring, just constantly going over walls. You've got a Kha'Zix that can jump. Uh, a Jax as well, but Jax is limited to being able to actually see an enemy minion or just, like, you know, wall bounce. Uh, sorry, ward bouncing. So it can come either way, but it really depends, you know, what type of champion you're coming up against. But look, it looks like we have a very quick champion ban phase, uh, champion selection phase that just completely just went through my mind just then. It just happened before my eyes. And what I'm seeing, it's looking very interesting. Exactly right. You know, you can speak a lot about the, you know, the champions that aren't in the game, but let's talk a little bit about the ones that are in the game. A Zed, a Darius, a Pike, a lot of damage, and a lot of execution coming straight out of the red side. On the blue side, you have two... Very big carry threats, a nice assassin, and two beefy tanks in that front line. What can you see is going to happen in these next 30 to 40 minutes or so? Oh, so far things are looking very, very interesting. Jax versus Udyr. I personally think Jax has a bit of comfortability against an Udyr since Udyr is majority basic attack base. So if Jax manages to get that counter, uh, I believe it's counter strike off uh, just early into the actual fight itself, he will put himself in a very favorable position. Darius versus Orn. That is something I'm really looking forward to seeing. We've got a very com a very common and historical Katarina versus Zed. That is something I'm I'm also interested in seeing. But I haven't seen much Pike gameplay as uh, you know recently over the last couple of weeks. I haven't seen much Pike gameplay. But I know, I know since his release, he's been very powerful as a very aggressive support, especially since that is what he was designed for. I'm keen to see how MO1 plans to play him for game number one. How is he gonna make it, how is he gonna make effective use of it, especially with a Tristana pick on his own, uh, you know, for his team partner, or should I, yeah, his team player on, you know, in his lane. Like, what are your thoughts on this, Iridescence? Well, that bot lane says one thing and one thing only to me. It's we wanna go forward and we wanna go kills. Pike is packing the Ignite. Tristana has the jump forward along 
with the spear and you know this the stun right after once pike gets you between these two you're staying on the wrong side of the rift she'll jump on the other side of you she'll knock you back towards her tower he'll stun you he'll execute they both collect the gold and you know it's happy days for this bot lane but one big thing i want to bring forth is how is he going to build the pike is he going to be building the assassin build, the Yomus, the Dust Blade, or are they going to be going the what seemed to be the prefer uh, the preferred route of the professional players, building him with a lot of you know, armor and mag resist to let him stay alive to get those executes? It'd be certainly interesting to see how well Mo One has mastered this champion, because you know you don't have to, you just have to look at his kit to show how much of a spectacle this champion can be if he gets going. Absolutely, and coming into the last fifty seconds. As we get ourselves underway with game number one, everything is looking very everything is looking very balanced at the moment. Both top laners have their teleport and flash combo going. Both junglers are sticking with the uh, the historical flash and smite as well. But what's interesting to see is that we've got Alistair and Pike both running the flash and ignite combo. I would I would assume I would see uh, an exhaust happening from at least one from one support, but both are going very aggressively with those uh, ignites at the moment. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to work. You know, whoever gets one off first, it's going to be interesting. Well, I mean, you look at this, you've got two AD carriers who both qualify as a hyper carry. You've got that big three item. Well, I'd say it would be four items. Now, Triss comes in and she just shoots you four times and you're gonzo. But we do actually see an exhaust and that's going to be in the hands of the Katarina. Purely to counteract this Zed in the laning phase. Zed has the range. Katarina has a dagger throw that does very little damage, but her mobility is almost unmatched. So this this middle lane, and I think the early game is going to be purely defined on how well and which of these two assassins get ahead and start pushing that advantage elsewhere around the map. I agree. Like I'm really I'm really interested in seeing how face attack how face attack is actually going to play off the exhaust. It's real. I, I guess it's really powerful going playing against the Zed. If Zed gets his ulti on, she can just instantly exhaust him, and a lot of his damage is just cut in half straight away. And I, I'm I'm really I'm actually really surprised, and I'm fascinated that you know by by his choice of uh, by his choice of summoner spells. Oh, I lost my breath for a second there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm really interested to see how it's going to play, and it looks like from the uh, from the rune setup she's got there and there, she's gone with the um assassination based starting tree but then she goes off into the resolve tree so um it looks like she might be trying to go for a bit more of survivability in the early game exactly right but one interesting thing here is the phase rush on Udi. he's gonna be pounding down these lanes i mean not quite as good as predator because you do have to get the abilities off first and that's going to cost a lot of mana especially if you want to use the phase rush to gank in darius He's got Conqueror, pretty standard in that top lane, but we see Kaisa, knowing she's going into a losing matchup when it comes to range, has got the sustain rune, uh, where you see Tristana, she's packing press the attack, she wants kills. Absolutely, coming in with that press, uh, press the attack, it will be very interesting. She all in, she is not planning to get herself out of there without taking at least one person down. And if Tristana gets a, a takedown, her... Her rocket jump is instantly reset, so she can get in and out without a doubt. Udi running that phase rush, as you as you as you've already stated, it is very powerful, especially on an Udi, because Udi can just keep up with you the entire time. I have a bit of an error, so you might have to cast on without me. Unable to download spectator I'm, data. I also am experiencing that slight uh, that slight little mishap as well. I'm not really sure what's going on. There has been a lot of spectator delay, or spectator uh, problems occurring recently, and I'm not really sure how to go about it. But I am able to reconnect, so I hope we can get yeah, ourselves up and running in a couple of seconds. Hopefully, it can download the spectator data. What are you doing? Right, spaghetti code. Come on, guys. It is really annoying when it. Re it's really no. It's really annoying when this happens. Like you get yourselves ready, you're getting yourself away. And then the you know technical difficulty just comes straight before you, and it's a little bit annoying. Hey, we're into the game now, and so we are going to see a pretty standard spread 
Ah, that's a lie. There's a bit of an invasion going on here from the blue side. They're going to go drop a ward on that blue buff with Katarina in support. Just, just, getting, the, yourself, just getting yourselves underway with uh, the slight little delay. This is a little bit unfortunate. The sync up delay is always interesting. Yeah, the sync up delay between spectators can be a problem, but I'm seeing it about a minute 15 now, so. Right, we are going to see. Just a just slight say? little. Sorry, I just I just need to. I do need to express this because a lot of uh, a majority of us uh, staff here, you know, at the analyst desks are all actually, you know, participating from different uh, different zones. So we're all using different screens. We need to do a slight little sync up, so there won't be any confusion, you know, between the spectating as well as the communication, or should I say, the specta um the commentating from us. So. Okay. Exactly right, but you know, Reinhardt, they don't really care about that. They're here to come watch some League of Legends, so we are going to see pretty standard starts from both teams. The top lane, Orn's going to be pushing at this, Darius. They're going to be both want to be shoving in, and I'll be expecting to see a lot of neutral waves, but this mid lane, this is the way, the place to watch, where a lot of finesse and outplay can come into it. Iridescence, we have been, uh, you have been advised to understand where, uh, where you're at time-wise, so we can all do a quick sync up. I am at 2 minutes and 20 seconds now. You got to go back to 40 seconds. Why? Because Yuna is the one hosting the stream. Oh my god. To 40. Tell me what the... To 40 seconds. Alright, I'm at 42 seconds now. Alright, we'll get ourselves underway in 3... Two, one, and we are officially ready and I'm just about to get ourselves into game number one. Iridescence, once again, I hand over the start of the game to you because it looks like we have an invasion happening. It is going to be a little bit of a no, it's just going to be a ward going down. So getting a little bit of intel coming from the blue side, getting that ward, they know exactly where Udi's going to be starting. And that will allow the Jax to play proactively because he knows he's going to be going from bottom to top side. So can you take advantage of that? Can he race him to his own buffs? And it looks like Jax, no, he's going to start at his own red. So it's not going to be any sort of cheeky three buff starts. I like how both junglers are mirroring each other, essentially. They're shadowing each other without a, a full understanding. Like, we do see a ward happening on Udyr's side, the red side of the map. I'm not really seeing anything from uh, the red team in terms of warding. So at the moment, Jax is a little bit hidden. He can make a sneaky move if he decides to. The lack of warding in the early, just at the start of this game, has really got me curious as to how they're going to go about this. I mean, they don't know where Jax is. However, all of blue team know where Udi is. They know where he started. They know they have a rough idea of where he's going to be pathing. And now it's a matter of seeing whether Jax might actually take advantage of this. Exactly right. Now, Jax has already gone from red straight to wool, so he's just skipped out on the two highest value camps. But that's okay, because he can get to this blue buff and then, you know, path accordingly. And as we see, most lanes right now are neutral. Udir has gone a very weird path thing. He's gone blue to wolf and then back to Grom. So I'm expecting him to show bottom side next, uh, because otherwise that's just, you know, super inefficient. Abs absolutely. Like There's a flash up. already. It is going to be burnt by the by Zed. The exhaust coming down to chase it. And after all that, nobody dies. Zed using both summoner spells and getting nothing for it. No, but in return, we see Katarina has also expensed that exhaust. So a lot of his damage was cut in half right there. And I, I you can only assume that the the remaining health she had made up the difference. You know, if, if she didn't pop that exhaust, that would have been lights out for her. And it looks like it's a complete Ooh. fight. Back Katarina's going to throw her own flash, but Jax comes in. First blood picked up by the jungler. All summoner spells lost in the mid lane now, though. A very powerful early game, like a lot of it to start with. I was expecting Zed to take down Katarina, but Jax coming in from the top river just right there just really shows us how in sync they are at the moment with synergy. And over in the top hand, over in the top lane, we've got a lot of aggression in favor of Orn. Orn has control of the lane. And I'm curious to see how he's going to play it. Is he going to pause the lane or is he going to continue pushing it? You know, be fully aggressive right up to the turret. Yeah, exactly right. Now, he is a very good champion to push on. 
Okay, so you can already see that evident by a small CS lead picked up by him. So, you know, look, Orn's going to be pressuring that tower, and also his ability to stay in lane longer than Darius. But hang on, there's a bit of a scrap in the jungle. Jax, he's asserting dominance. Udi, you're in the wrong place. Not really, you're in your own jungle, but Jax is just going to push you out of it. Zed did rotate, so a good ping coming out of Katarina to let him know it's time to back off. Yeah, that was very powerful engage from him right there, just being able to invade. But in the top lane, it looks like Tristano got caught out. There's yeah, a that's... lot of action happening everywhere. I can't yeah. keep up with this. It's everywhere, and uh, Darius is in a very scary place. Jax is just waiting and praying in his tri tribe bush now, waiting for the right moment. Orn's going to get this under tower, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a level 4 dive. I wouldn't be surprised either at this point. I mean, Blue Team or Elizabeth College, should I say, almost Honorable, are doing very well right now. Orn's up in the top lane, turret diving though. Oh, Darius does make it out alive a little bit there. He does survive, just that, with that slight little bit of help. I guess it was a really close call, but well done to Orn for being so aggressive right there. On the mid lane, we've got a lot of action as well, but it looks like it was very short-lived as face attack does go down really quickly. Yeah, exactly right, but... Wait, somebody died? Nobody's died, what? Where, just, just for my knowing so, where are you at time-wise? Five spectators? minutes and 13 seconds. Okay, then I'm at 5 minutes 17. I'll just pause for two seconds, getting ourselves back in. Zed is making his... Zed's in the river, the bottom half. Looks like he was heading towards somewhere. He's yeah, just, it's just recalling now, though. Yeah, I, I assumed he would have been going towards bottom lane since they are really aggressive at the moment. And because there's not many minions there at the moment, the minions have only passed the tier 1 turret. It could have, you know, been a little bit more favorable for him. But I do have to make a mention, Udyr managed to also get a, a slight little invade going to see where Jax might be. He knows Jax's not in the top half of the map, so I'm really keen to see what he might plan to do with this information. It doesn't matter, there. but there is an engage in the bot lane, and Pike does manage to save a little bit out of it. Tristan a lot more damage. Darius, also, he's not having a fun time swinging that axe, but hitting nothing but creeps. Orn, it, Big Daddy Orn, you do not want to be fighting with him right now. No, he does get a lot of stacks onto Orn. Orn does manage to get himself out of a sticky situation. It's almost like he didn't really pay much attention to it. Like, he doesn't feel threatened by Darius' ability to actually get those stacks onto him. I, I think he's got, a, like, a small little counterplay going. Like, he felt... I'm getting this feeling that he felt like he was safe. And well, he was going to allow him to continue attacking for a couple of seconds. Well, exactly right. You know, look at that. Orn hasn't been back to base, but has built himself a nice Barmy Cinder. So he's not really going to be having too much trouble in terms of damage coming out of Darius. He's only self picked him up a Kindle Gem. And look, he's just doing the range break. Does get pulled under tower. So a couple of tower shots are going to hit Orn and another few as well. So he actually does quite. He loses out on the trade through just poor positioning. But look around this map. Look at that lovely ward line set up by the red side. And as, as I say that, Zed wants a piece of Katarina. Neither of them are going to go down. The exhaust is used at the last second. So Katarina lives, and so does Zed, just getting back out of that tower. Yeah, a slight little recap on that. Zed goes full on right into the face of Katarina, pops that ignite, followed by the exhaust from Katarina to minimize the damage. I have to exactly. put that on pause. In top lane, we've got Darius going on. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Darius... <sighs> This is not what the lane you want to see from a lane bully like Darius. He's not doing well. He's 20 CS down. You know, he's not holding much off his tower. Orn is having a field there. He's loving it up there right now. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to say, Orn is doing really well to stay in the lane for a lot longer. He's 20 CS up, and it's only it's uh, the gap is only beginning to increase. He can just stay in lane, build his items while there because of his passive. And, you know, he has a replenishable shield. Ooh, so he has that, that was a mistake, Katarina. You've chased the dagger, but only found death. Oh, very power, very powerful re-engage from Zed right there. I don't, I'm not really sure what was going on through Kat's mind, but it looks like it was a fatal mistake right there. Exactly right. It, uh, it was not the best of pressings of buttons. But now we see that Udi, he's made his way to the bottom lane, but with no Predator, he has decided to go to the phase rush. Can't really get in there. You know, he's stuck at walking speed and... You know, it's going to make it hard, but Jax is here, and he's just pulled the Alistair back in, but that's not going to matter. They're just going to disengage, push him back, and a recall coming out of Trist. 
Very powerful engage indeed. Just we start with Udyr, and then we see Jax coming in. Just a little bit of delay. He does come in, and it's it's interesting how close both champions are at the moment. They like both junglers. They're both very close in CS at the moment, as well as uh, gold. Well, sorry, I have to I have to correct myself. The gold accumulation between both players are Nick are very close. Darius fam, you've chased him a long way, and that's gonna be the execute coming down on not respecting the Darius hitting level six and paying the ultimate price. No, that was absolutely surprising right there. And the bottom lane, we had a very powerful turret dive happening from Alistair and Kaiser. That he does manage to get himself out of a sticky situation, being able to get that E off and just dash straight through both and having that stun ready in case they decide to do anything funny. It was a bit less of a tower dive and more of a, a pike gonna rip you under my tower down in that bot lane. But now we need to see... <laughs> yes, that is absolutely true. But now we need to look at these junglies. You know, Jax is putting a lot of pressure 1 and 0, oh, well, but in, below in CS. So that's one thing I want to mention. The CS is not as good as they'd really want. But, you know, he's still... You know, Udi's come and helped out a bit. But Jax, he got the first blood, he needs to use it, but where does he assert that pressure? And right now it looks it's looking like top lane. As the Orn Horn gets called, Darius flashes away and Jax is just gonna say, well, you've done your job, I'm gonna go back, but only find Udyr. Now Darius is here and he, a little bit of a miscommunication there, I feel. Well, Jax managed to get himself out of a sticky situation, pop in the counter attack, or the counter strike, just to be able to get himself away from Darius, especially with the W slow, and just the general uh, stacks of his, you know, of his passive. The only thing he could really do at that point is just really just use his Q to get the stacks off, but his ulti was also on cooldown, so I think he would be in for a bit more of a prolonged fight if he decided to go wholeheartedly into that. Exactly right, but yeah, we're gonna see in the river, Orn and Udi are given chase, uh, but they're caught, no? Katarina is coming as well, a lot of damage coming out of Zed with that proc. In the bottom lane, there's a good talk, there's a fight in the river as well, which one do we watch? Darius is running for the hills and he's about to go down to a lovely wallop from Jax. And the bottom lane, no one dies, so at the end of it all, top lane was the one to watch. And coming in favour of Elizabeth Close, that was really powerful. Darius in there for so long. But uh, Jax, you're gonna die. Zed's gonna pick you up. So he does manage to pick up a nice shutdown as Kaisar gets ripped back into a bad place. But in comes the execute. The damage coming through. The rocket jump is gonna come out as well. O Sticks picks up. They trade one for one. But now it is gonna be Tristana walloping on the cow. And there is very little he can do. He has popped the ult though. But now it's time to leave Alistair. You're not going to be able to survive this. He does actually live. Tristana gives up the chase. But that was a lot of damage coming straight out of the Kaiser. Able to blow up the pipe just as he does put the execute damage down. But wasn't quite long enough to actually kill him. So... No, that is unfortunate. I do have to give a special credit for Pike for being very aggressive though. It worked in favor of... You know, in of his of his uh, bot lane because Kaiser died in the midst of that fight after taking down Pike. Tristana is left alive. She also has free roam. She also has a free line to be able to farm and catch up in the CS. At 12 minutes 03, we have the uh, the Rift Herald already taken. Udi has picked Ooh. up the uh, has picked but, up the uh, mid lane. Everything is going on. The teleport's coming through from Orn. And here comes the ram one more time. It is going to pick up Udi. Udi, you're not in a good spot. That is a fantastic teleport coming out of Orn, making the proactive plays, but it's still not over. Jax has come to join the party as Pike dashes out, and they're going to successfully, they're going to get out of there, but at the loss of their jungler. A very effective engage right there. Just Udi goes in with all intentions of taking down Katarina, and it just... The teleport just completely turned the tide, and it, it worked so well because they managed to take down Udyr in the mix. You know that is um, that is one eye of Herald that won't be unleashed at this point in the game, which I guess would be really powerful for Elizabeth College, seeing as Liz no turrets have been taken. It's not, and... You're not wrong, but it, you know this top lane and bot lane, they're both looking at taking a tower each, but the bottom lane is backed off, so they are going to go towards this river, which. I'm going to kind of have to disagree with. That was first tower blood that was basically free, and now it looks like Darius might be able to pick that up. Absolutely. And I've just been advised, I do need to speed up a little bit just to catch up. I feel like I'm sl I'm slowly a little bit behind right there. Just It's annoying when you play it when you're casting from two different states. It's just a, 
It's a bit of a, a hiccup, really. Uh, it's as good as you can get, but Darius did stay for this tower, and now he's going to take this fight. He really can do the calculations. He knows how much his Darius is going to do, and he does turn that fight around from what looked like a very poor position to almost the outplay. Yeah, like the turret is pretty much one hit away from going down, but he still doesn't continue the chase. I guess he was. I guess he was a little bit afraid of Orn's ability to actually CC him. Uh, Not on the bottom lane. But however, we do have this bottom lane, and Udi is taking a buttload of damage for no real reason. But uh, again, in the top lane, these two are loving the fight. Orn getting the knock up. But look at that. The Conqueror, one more order, would have done a good amount of damage. But none of the teams have, have managed to get these towers. Both of them, you know, a slight breeze will knock them over, but they're holding well. They definitely are holding well. Like, I have to give special credit to Orn. His turret is almost gone. Like, there is only a skin amount. Actually, I'd, as I say that, the bottom lane turret does go down, so it looks like Elizabeth College are now making progress for their team. Exactly right, but now Alistair, he's been dragged in, and that's exactly where he wants to be. Knocking people up, Kaisar doing the damage, one buster shot, gonna keep alive, but Zed is here, and he's turning it around. He picks up his fourth kill without a death, and he's looking for the cow now. Zed is looking very, very large at the that was an odd flash from Zed, but Zed picked it up, picked himself up a double kill. Five and one now. Katarina one and two. She looked very good in lane, but the roams, Zed's roams have been so much better. And right now, even in the top lane, these two are constantly punching on. It's just an absolute amazing how both top laners are versing each other. Like, they're both staying alive as possible. They want to give their team the maximum opportunity to be able to take on things. In the bottom lane, we have the Herald Unleashed, and they're going to take down their first turret in response to such an amazing turnaround uh, from before when, you know, Zed managed to take two kills. All right, so as Shelly dies there after taking the bottom tower, there is a there is a dragon here, and they're setting up to a bit. Was that, you know, that Rift Tower better used in the mid lane to crack open the map? Because now you can see Elizabeth College, they're here, and they're not going to give this dragon over for free, and it looks like Calvin are just going to back away, and... They're going to come in, it's still leashed, so they're just going to take it for themselves, and recalls are being channeled. Well, it's very interesting, they're, they're essentially setting up for a, you know, a team fight. Curious yeah, what they're going to do here. Exactly right, but neither team has a top laner with teleport, so it is just going to go over to Elizabeth College for free. No contest, they get bullied off their own dragon after playing, making the proactive play, and they just, you know, leash it. I'm very curious. I'm very curious as what they were thinking when they decided to hand the dragon over Elizabeth College. Like, why did they back off? Why did they sit there and wait? Were they were they planning to try and get an invade and like you know steal a couple kills as well as the dragon in response to them catching on? And over in the top lane, the top turret goes down. Darius is making aggressive play. Yeah, Darius is pushing, pushing, chasing after. Uh, but it's not going to be coming much of that. Orn has the sustain. He has the ability to shop. He's got himself up some Ninja Tabi and, you know, he's going to miss him along with some armor. So, but in comes Katarina! A lot of damage goes straight down on a Tristana and she bites the dust and they want more. Here comes Katarina! That's a shutdown! 750 gold in his back pocket. Pike, you're not in a happy place either. Kaisar comes in. That's going to finish you off as well. And the collapse Katarina may be behind, but that damage... That was just insane. I loved what I saw. It was amazing how much they managed to catch, catch out a lot of uh, Calvin Christian. They managed to just, I have to say from the start, Katarina in with the initial engage. Cast with the ulti to close the gap and help finish up that first kill. Followed by Jax coming in with the counter strike uh, proc off to stun both Pike and another player. And just they instantly managed to secure another kill. And then finally just Pike running in the opposite direction putting himself even further into the fray, so... Uh, it looks like they managed to catch Cal uh, Calvin Christian College out, and they didn't really know how to respond to her. They just went with their instincts. Exactly right, and there comes the gold swing after that team fight. The gold advantage is now in the hands of Elizabeth College. Calvin were looking so much better early, the Zed being 5-2, and two, but nothing could be done for him in that fight. So now we're, we're basically even, we've got one tower down per side. But where is the next play? We have Dragon coming up in a little while, but Baron in a minute, whilst there's a fight in the bottom lane between these two assassins. Katarina 
is there and she's she's almost got ZZ, Z is running for his life, the jump to the dagger, the flash, not gonna be quite there, jump, oh. two, one more auto, what are you doing cat, does actually get the shampoo yes. off to finish him off, and uh, Pike, uh, you're on the wrong, you're in the wrong place, and you're gonna have to run, pulls Kaisa closer towards the Kaisa, one more auto, would have got the proc, but the flash counter strike stun, straight on top of Tristana, she does not get a chance to react, Pike is gonna be dashing away towards Darius, and uh, the ABC just sacrificed himself for the support, and that's definitely not what you want to see because now there's no wave clear to stop this tower from going down. Dragging in Kaiser back into the mix, that did raise a couple of questions right there. Why did you pull her back in? Why did you keep? Why did you put yourself in even more of a dangerous, you Ooh. know, position? Katarina face attack is doing so well to be able to just shun Poe onto everybody. But following up her daggers, I mean, she's really trying to make sure she gets those daggers off and just gets the as many procs. However, as she in can. the top lane, sorry to cut you off, but it is going to be Pike seeing the last of this lifetime, followed by Darius. As we see, a double kill picked up for Kaisa, and she is running rampant now. Elizabeth College, where has this come from? I am not sure, but Elizabeth College are doing really well. To lab. Uh, together and just put an absolute smashing performance for us. They've already, they're two turrets ahead. They are five, or so, I should actually correct myself, they've just managed to go on over 6,000 gold lead, catch, only increasing, and they have more map, they have more map available to them now. Like, the map has opened up incredibly. They have the top half of the map. That is the top lane and most of the mid lane. If they decided to, they could probably try and set themselves up for a very easy uncontested Baron at the moment. Exactly right, and we see the pings coming through on the Baron now, but that is going to be from Kelvin. So they are checking, but find Jack's taking away some cheeky Raptors. That's going to get them for himself. But the big thing is, 20 minutes in, and that base is broken, and inhibitor left unguarded in that top lane. And you know, you you see this Orn. He's out pushing Darius now. You see Katarina, she's absolutely destroying the Zed in terms of damage output, regardless of the KD. Kaisa, Kaisa has really stepped up and she's doing damage as well. What can Calvin do to stem this bleeding? Not really sure at this point. I'm a little bit uh, lost for words myself. The only thing I could really think of is that they really need to come together as a team. So far, they're still doing the 1-3-1 split. Whereas Elizabeth College are either doing a 4-1 split or even better yet, just all five together at one time. And it's really, it's looking really favorable for them because we'll just look how they've performed so far. They've well, managed to get a couple kills. They've got hey. two turrets. Pike does manage to live, but Katarina, she's not scared. But of course, you're going to be seeing Elizabeth College going in for these fights. Look at their team comp. They're wanting to fight. They have the Alistar, the Jax, the Ornhorn, Katarina with the da AoE damage. And Kaisar just destroying the back line. They're gonna be winning these fights. And as Darius pulls in Katarina, in comes the Ornhorn in reply, aiming for the AD carry. She's gonna be rocket jumping away, so nothing comes of this. But it is gonna be the chase is on. And Zed is going straight for that AD carry, but Pike, good dash to get over that wall. But it's not gonna matter. Look at the damage output, Kaisar. No one has died yet. No, no one has died yet, Reinhardt. It's 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 amazing iridescence. Like both teams are still managing to stay alive. Like we're having a tango in the mid lane. Just you know, Elizabeth College are just is passively just backing off, and Calvin are putting themselves even further into no man's land. Like I'm curious to see how this will work. Will Calvin will Calvin Christian actually manage to take a couple of kills as well as try and claim the dragon this time around, or are they just going to hand it over to Elizabeth like they did last time? Exactly right, and Elizabeth are showing their face, but with their out their biggest damage threat. So this is a fair fight, but they're leaving their jungler all alone, and he gets taken away. Doesn't matter, because Katarina does the work. I mean, not Katarina. Kaisa does the work, and they all fall, and as you mentioned again, you know, thanks for the leash, guys. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Although, I do have to say, last time, they didn't exactly really give them a leech. They just handed it over to them, you know, just straight out That's straight what out a leech is, isn't it, Glenn? You kind of just help take it down. And, uh, Pike, you're on the wrong side of that wall. Tristana's wanting some some aggression, but we actually have a, a GG call from Zed. As Katarina goes in one more time, the Q from Pike going to be cancelling that ultimate. Definitely saving his life. But this Katarina, she wants a little bit of everybody, and she's not going to stop until she gets it. Hey, when you're playing Katarina and you're fed 
you know, as as this cat is right now, like really hungry for kills. He, it's almost like he's in the middle of the desert. Hit the first. He's gonna go for the first champion he sees. He wants to get ahead, and you know that's just it's very common to try and get ahead like that, especially when you're playing a champion that relies on assassinating targets. Exactly right, and we all know what happens to a cat arena who's 0-4. Meanwhile, we do have a disconnection here. It is going to be from Kaisa, so I'm not sure if we're going to see a pause or if they're just going to muscle through. Never mind, she like didn't actually disconnect. She seems to be lost in just fine. Not quite sure what that was, but uh, now we go towards the Baron and uh, Kelvin. You're starting this up, but Katarina, sorry. Elizabeth is starting this up, and Katarina has found the carry, and she's going to deal with them alone, it seems. It's Kaisa. She's going to take down their tankiest member, Darkest Falls. Katarina, however, maybe a bit of more than she can chew this time. She's caught in a bad spot, but she is going to pick up at least one, and she is running for the hills. She's going to turn for the outplay. These resets, but Pike will finish her off as the rest of Elizabeth College comes to follow suit. The red buff, oh! The oh. red buff tick does the oh. last bit of damage to Udyr. And it is just going to be Pike left fending. Zed comes over, pulls back Alistair, but that's not who Zed wants to be going for. He can't kill him in one low, one burst. I have to say that escape from Uridir was almost com was almost completed, but not without Kaisa throwing in that W and getting the getting those getting those missiles straight onto him. Very powerful play and a very a very special congratulations to who's getting for just taking that down so easily. And exactly right. from that, in, from that powerful team play that we witnessed just before, a very easily uncontested Baron. Like I said before, they essentially just set themselves up for a free Baron. And seeing how many objectives they have, they have six turrets, as you know, as opposed to two. They have two mountain dragons. I am not liking what I am seeing. Like Elizabeth College are doing so well, but Calvin, Calvin Christian, what are you going to do? I, I want. I want to. I need to see some signals. I need to see some return. You know, return fire. I'm. Re I'm cheering for you guys. Like, give me something to work with. Well, I mean, a good start was getting that shutdown gold for Pi. I mean, Pike and Tristan have both got that shutdown gold. So that's a tasty little bit of burst into the back pocket. There is a ten gold deficit right now, which is certainly not preferred. But they still have their base. No inhibitors are broken, and they're gonna have to out like wait out this Baron as best they can. But look. Katarina and Kaisar, once they're dealt with, you can probably win this fight, but you need to pick them up. But look at that, Kaisar just walking up, straight up to a Zed, who should be, you know, Kaisar should be scared of Zed, but Kaisar's just happily rolling up and away. I feel the same. Normally in you goes would... Zed, and goodbye goes Zed. And as for <laughs> Katarina, uh, Katarina's probably going to die, because she's not very well, and that's great. That's onto their carry, on... Orn is in their base, just powering up some minions, so... There's gonna go down, but... Eventually, Orn's gonna kill Udi. There's no way Udi lives through this. Uh, he goes down, oh. and, uh... Look how tanky this big man is up in the top lane. Kaisa gets the inhibitor in the bottom lane, and in comes these final nails. However, Calvin not giving up! Down goes Darius, though, and the tank is dead. It is nothing but a bot lane, and Kaisa goes big! takes out the last two remaining people and that is going to close out this game for elizabeth college with a very dominating game one performance zed comes in on a wing and a prayer and uh praise for only death it seems down he goes to end the game kaisa picks up a nice triple triple any of the game at 10 and 2 game one to elizabeth college a very special congratulations to elizabeth college for such an impressive gameplay right there just towards the end they managed to herd all of Calvin Christian into one lane. Katarina does go down in the fray, but that opens up Elizabeth College's ability to just completely push the bottom lane. And then then on to top it off with just being able to continue the fray, you know, in the top half, just being able to take that turret, take that inhibitor, and as well as taking down Udi. Like, it was almost completely flawless towards the end. But with that, we have our first game of the night down in favor of Elizabeth College. We will be right back. We'll just go to a, uh, a quick little break as we get ourselves uh, sort of ready and set up for game number two between both teams.
brisk, chilling air is calling, and out there we're free to run and jump and live so wildly. Head first, we'll go tumbling through places unknown, with nothing but the stars to light our way. And though the sun may set at night. Tomorrow looks so bright, 'cause home, home is when you're by my side. No matter what we do, together we'll see it through. And I hope, hope that we won't drift apart, even though. Without you, it's not the same. I know it's true. Life's better when it's me and you.
good. Hey everybody, and welcome back to game number two of the W of the WA uh, High School Esports League of Legends. This is the uh, finals for today's event. For those of you that are catching a little bit, we have two teams. We've got Elizabeth College on the right, or otherwise known as Almost Honorable, versus Calvin Christian College on the sorry, Calvin Christian School on the left, or should I also refer to them as Dysfunctional? My name is Reinhardt. I am joined once again by Iridescence. Iridescence, what were your thoughts for game number one? Well, it was pretty plain and simple. It was objective control was really poor from CC. You know, they just gave away Dragon, literally leashed the Dragon twice for their opponent and let that Katarina run rampant. They didn't put any focus into shutting her down and she just ran away with the game along with the Kaisar in wind. I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. The, the point you made about the dragon just being leashed, really, both times around, especially since there were both mountain dragons and they were having problems with trying to get, obje uh, trying to get any objective besides the first two turrets uh, of, you know, within the first 15 minutes. It really makes you question what was their what was their ulterior motive throughout that phase? Like, were they trying to sneak it in, and then when they got caught, they had no choice but to just walk away? Or like, I was a little bit confused. Yeah, like, exactly I, I right. It, it seemed like a bit of a uh, you know hand in the cookie jar situation. And they got they got caught out taking the dragon. They're like, oh well, you know, mum's caught us. We got to run away now. But you know, the, at least the second time they had the advantage. They were four v three. So they could have taken that fight, and they, I mean, I can't tell you whether they would, they would have would or not have won it, but they certainly would have had great odds to winning it and still getting the dragon. Instead, they walked away, wasted time whilst Darius continued to push up that top lane. Uh, sorry, why Orn continued to push up that top lane. And so not only did they not get the dragon, they lost a lot of tempo in the top lane, and, you know, they got nothing for it. They walked away with nothing to show for their efforts. Absolutely. And a, a very special mention to both mid laners for game number one. Zed was really powerful and really, he was really alive, you know, for most of the game. In the later portion of game number one, he decided to just slow, he decided to just, you know, solo lane. He tried to be a split pusher and doing the 1 3 1 situation versus almost a 4 1 split. It was just absolutely amazing how Elizabeth College were so on top of everything. They ended up actually able, they actually were able to herd all of Calvin Christian school into a single lane while the rest of the lanes did their job. Exactly right. And uh, that's a bit of a PTS P PTSD ban. Katarina will not be in the hands of face attack this game around. No, we have the second ban once again on the gin as well from uh, Elizabeth College. And it looks like they are really, really not wanting to see Jin play it at all. Same with Lucian. Last round, they were both banned out straight away. And we have, I think, it looks like it's a very typical first round, a second round ban phase once again. Yeah, exactly right. So we are going to see the Braum. Lucian Braum, not going to be on this game. But it is interesting, uh, Reinhardt. They've taken both parts of the combination away. Do you feel like one of those span slots could go in a better place as we see Kaisar. She's not going to be found on this on the rift again. No, just seeing the uh, as you mentioned before the PTSD uh, bands right there. Just one from Katarina, but it's interesting to see Kaisar's band out for game number two. I'm I'm a little Why bit curious team about that with it too. So yeah, now we're going to see <sighs> Zaya picked up straight away from you know from CC, but. Rakan, he's instantly going to be declined, so he will, they will not get that duo. And Vayne, so the bot lane has been picked up of a Vayne and a Rakan. Not the best of synergy, but we can see what can happen as face attack. Just throws a bit of a meme at the enemy team here and says, well, you could play Zed. I'm going to show you how to do it. Absolutely, and he's still he's still continuing with the flash and exhaust combo. No. I feel like... No, sorry, I take that back. He does fix himself up last second. I do have to give a special round of applause to uh, Elizabeth College for denying the love uh, for the dynamic duo lovers bot lane combination. Yeah, just picking the just picking Rakan denied Zaya's full capability of being unleashed for game number two, and it's going to be really interesting to see how it's going to play it out. At the moment, we've got Blitzcrank who can be really viable with his with his hook grab as well as his knock up 
followed yeah, by his got... ulti. Yeah, go on. Yeah, we've got the goon running around the bottom lane. Now, this is a very fun pick. It's fun to watch. And not only is it fun to watch, we also have Kled, who, in uh, my personal opinion, is the funniest champion in League of Legends with his quotes and his champion design and yelling at his lizard for drinking his mushroom juice. But in return to that, is this a Scion mid lane here, Glenn? A Scion mid lane. I, I feel like it is. It's going to be very interesting to see how it's going to go because we've got three D in the jungle once again. We've got Blitzcrank as the new... Actually, I... I think I should just summarize that we're seeing an entire new uh, a champion pool from CC, but the only champion that remains constant is Uidir, where opposed to Elizabeth College, they have an entire new team comp. They've stolen they've stolen Zed. All right, so first attack wants to go up as Zed this time around. However, we're seeing an entirely new team comp from them as well, and it's really interesting to see when there's a new comp all the time. Yeah, exactly, and, uh, you know, neither team has the same champions. There is nothing mirrored right now, except for the Udi. He's the one surviving pick from the same team that picked him up last game. But Zed into Sion, is Sion a hidden counter? There's something I'm not aware of? Or, you know, is Sion just a comfort pick? Hell, it might even be a Kled in the mid lane. He is the one that has Ignite. You're absolutely right. Just picking up from those... Uh, summoner spells, It's it could be very clear that Kled is going to be uh, the mid laner for CC this time, and Sion acting in the top lane. But historically, from what I've seen in a couple games that I've played with a Kled in mid, or even Sion in the mid, they are a very dangerous combination. I do feel a little bit worried if that's going to be a Sion in the mid lane, only because Zed can just run around behind him. If he gets If he starts charging up that Q, and getting ready to slam it down onto Zed. Zed can just shatter away or even ulti. So it denies Sion any capability of just controlling the team, uh, controlling the fighting scenario. So going 1v1 against Zed, the only thing I really see that Sion has is his bubble, his CC, as well as his uh, extent, you know, his ever growing amount of health. Like, you know, he's one of the only champions in the game that will just passively, you know, gain health from killing minions as well as champions. Yeah, but we I'm actually really have two it. champions that way. So both Sion and Cho'Gath can both infinitely scale on health, but Kled also can't be one-shot by Zed from full health because of the way the skull mechanic works. So even if Zed unleashes all the damage, as long as Zed doesn't take Kled off of Skull before the death mark pops, Kled will survive. He's guaranteed to survive. Absolutely. The only thing that is problematic... Once that passive has been popped and Skyro just runs away, is that he has very limited movement speed. He only has two abilities available to himself. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two availables um, available to use. That's correct. His ulti is. has been denied. So if he doesn't use it within time, it's denied. And he's essentially a sitting duck. He doesn't have that much health. His stats won't exactly help him when he's very low, especially if any champion on the enemy team has Corp de Grace because they get that, you know, below 40% maximum health damage increase. Exactly right. The coup de grace could definitely be an interesting thing brought forth here. But one thing we are going to see is we're going to see a Vayne. And now Vayne historically isn't the most popular champ competitively. She suffers a lot. You know, she lacks wave clear, she lacks range. She certainly, however, does not lack in damage. And when you have a big, beefy front line like a Scion, Udi, and Kled, Vayne's just going to go straight through that. Yeah, and but what's I have to also say in terms of interesting, um, you know, from what we're seeing so far, is we've got ourselves a Cho'Gath jungle. I'm curious to see how Cho'Gath will be played in, you know, in the finals, especially for a team-based environment a Cho'Gath jungle. He'll be able to get his stacks just as easily as he would in lane, but he's very limited in his ability to actually you know, close the gap on someone unless he gets a slow on them. That's either his, uh, his Q, which would be his spikes, or his W, which is essentially you know, his, his, uh, his silence. But I'm pretty sure that doesn't really have any slowing capability. His Q and E are the only ones that really have any form of slow and potential to close the gap on enemy champions. But Glenn, you're forgetting one very important thing about Cho'Gath and his uh, CC. What is that? It's his R. You can't use abilities when you're dead. 
That is so true, especially since it also does true damage. And the only thing that you can really negate against true damage is just more health. It's as simple as that. If you don't have enough health and they do true damage to you, you essentially, as you said, they will die. <laughs> they yeah, will be exactly. nothing about it. Yeah, there is no amount of armor you can stack to stop that eat. But we are going to get onto the rift very soon as this game loads up. Now, predictions, what I want to hear from you, Reinhardt. Can Calvin bring it back, or is it just going to be the Elizabeth College show all night tonight? I think they'll be able to bring it back in game number two. They've got a very good team going. They've got Kled for the engage, Sion as well as another potential engage. And they've got a lot of CC happening, like powerful CC happening from their team. And I'm really curious to see how they're going to play about it. Are they going to use it effectively? Like Sion with his initial ulti, Kled possibly being the initial engage. His ulti does give them extra, his entire team extra movement speed. And it's it's amazing how much more, like, you know, capabilities they have to, you know, jump on champions at that point. You know, just if they want to engage, they can engage. And there's not much Elizabeth College can do. And coming in, just going to get ourselves off this little slight pause. All right. We're going to get into game number two, ladies and gentlemen, in three, two, one. Let's go. I like how both teams are being very passive at the moment, going with a, an easy startup. Udi a little bit late to the mix, but he's going to get himself out there. It's a very good thing that both teams decided to stay on their own sides of the map for this one. Last okay. game, Elizabeth was... Uh, they decided to engage to start with, just to try and get that ward on the blue buff and see what Udi will do. This time around, they're both staying passive. They both possibly have an idea of where each other are, but it looks like they're just going to be playing the guessing game. Exactly right. Now, what Elizabeth College has to be careful of is that Blitz crank, crank hook. <laughs> you do not want to get pulled into an Udi who could possibly have his stun, into a Kled who can possibly have his bear trap on a rope. If you get caught by Blitz crank, you're dead when you have these four champions in the bottom half of the map. So, you know, they're just going to play it nice and safe. But one thing here to watch again is this Kled mid lane. I'm excited, Glenn. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I like seeing new things. I like I like new experiences. And this is a new experience that I haven't seen for a very long time. And considering how many changes they make in a single patch, I really want to see how effective they can make this Kled in, you know, it's just in the mid lane. Look at him. He's, he's already just, going in. He's just running up and beating on the old assassin. But that's at level 1. When it comes to level 3, I think that tempo is going to change just a little bit. But we're going to see the top lane. Chen's taking a bit of a chunking, and along with that, is that a Comet Scion? That is definitely a Comet Scion. A very good counter No, it's not. Shen. It's an Aftershock. It's an Aftershock Scion. It, I, is that an Airy Shen, then? What? I don't know what it was. It looked like a Comet come through. But who cares about Comets? Here comes Udi, and Shen, you are on the wrong side here buddy he's gonna be flashing away out of that but the minions are doing the work and this time it's udi getting first blood for his team that was incredibly powerful just udi coming in at claimed his second buff yet he's only got his blue no sorry he's only got his red he doesn't got his blue but he still has enough mana to be able to engage on such a such a powerfully um oh like my brain is just freezing so much right now. Well, you know, it, you know what happened is, you know, the Udi came, but Chen made the poor choice to fight in a huge double wave of minions. So he was already, you know, at a disadvantage as it was. As we see that blood bird's kind of go wide. But in comes Clem, and he's doing the damage. Does get knocked off Skull at the last moment. But Zed going to be getting away with that shadow and flash with Barely, you know, living on the skin of his teeth as there's another grapple top lane. These two top laners really like hitting each other. And this time, it's uh, Shen fighting well with his Q passive. So he's going to come out on top as Sion might back. No, he's going to stay around and collect that farm. But this time, Zed's come in. But Zed's got under tower. Too little, too late. Chogaf, he's also in trouble. He's flashed away. One more auto stops to rupture. He probably would have lived had he run away. But this time... It is Calvin, and they've opened up their account with a nice three kills early. And what, what also that we need to mention in is that Clad has gotten a solo kill. Udi has gotten not only a solo kill, but also a, a lane kill as well. So that's going to put him ahead quite a bit, considering 
you know, how close they were to start with between, you know, Udyr and Trogath. Now he's going to have more a more comfortable time, and he knows he'll be able to take on Tro uh, Trogath at any stage of the game at the moment. If he denies Trogath's ability to actually... Ooh, however, mind you, that can dem into the wall very nearly sealing Blitzcrank's fate. Zaya so throws some feathers in retaliation, but... Uh... Not much. Blitzcrank really needs to work on where he's standing. He can't be standing in that bush. There is wards in both bush, and look, all that's going to take now is here's the roll, but it doesn't matter. Blitzcrank does pick him up. Vayne has far more damage at this point in the game. She has more mobility, more health, one more silver bolt, picks up the kill. Also, the summoners will have been coming through the heal. Presti Tech does go through, but hang on. This, now in the top lane, there's a fight, and this time it is Udyr in trouble. Udyr, not quite fast enough yet as he gets eaten up. Cho'Gath gets his revenge. So Cho'Gath, whilst well behind in CS, does get a little bit back in his favor. Just from that right there, I feel as though Cho'Gath will be able to make a comeback now. He he took down the he took down Udyr, getting a kill, closing the gold, ga gold cap. Uh, sorry, the gold accumulation between both him and his counter. And I feel like he might be able to, you know, make a big difference just from that right there. Or it is denied something. Just as exactly. much as Sion in the top lane. Uh, Sion has missed his TL, so his fight is done. Plus that very late Grasp of the Undying proc, giving the heal and the extra damage. So, you know, Shen is really asserting dominance, but that will change as the game moves on the wave clear. But, ooh, Rakan has been grabbed by the Goon, but he's just going to jump back. Of course, it is Rakan. He can just fly around the screen. And, however, Vayne, yeah, you got to be real careful. If she rips those back timely. You're in trouble. But in the top lane, this time, Sion is in a world of hurt. The taunt comes through inside the Spirit's Refuge, and Sion still does live. By some miracle, he lives. And by some miracle, I mean his flash. I agree. I th I assume si uh, Sion would go down in that mix. And uh, speaking of going down, Zed again pretty close. He's going to take Kled off of Skull. So now Zed can do the damage, but the level 6 is there. So the level advantage for Kled and the shotgun also from Rage. But there's the ult. Kled, you're in trouble. The shotgun going to work, but dashes away goes Zed. The death mark pops. Kled, bit too greedy. Just a little bit. He stayed. He stayed above his boundary. Just I was watching both players. One level six, one level five, and it was just. It was just waiting to happen. Who wins this fight? I believe it is going to be Udyr because Chogath has no ult. He's only level four. A little bit concerning as to why he decided to go in on that mix right there. Just you know, Udyr may be getting it. I think he just wanted to steal it and put himself in a little bit more than you know what he could handle at the. Exactly right, and uh, Vayne just uh, telling Blitzcrank to kindly get lost with that Condemn. Very pretty skin, that, that Vayne skin. I do like that skin. I do as well. I like the skins That's that fun. have a, a unique animation and so different from the original, and they're, they're more interactive almost. Exactly right, I do own that skin. But now we have a look at these items. We see Vayne, she goes back, picks up her cartilage. In comes the pain train, and uh, yeah, Scion's just gonna... I mean, sorry, not Sion. Sion's actually going to do some damage. Shen's just going to dash through, and he really should have just kept walking. I don't know why he decided to walk straight back into that. But I'm just as confused as I'm just as confused as you are. But you're seeing how things are going at the moment. Shen's not exactly going in when he's got all. He's got his grasp of the undying stacked. He's going in before it even starts, and I feel like. That's a little bit problematic, just to start with, because that's one less grasp of the undying you get. But in comes Kled, the two semi-global ultimates coming for Shen. He's in the Spirit's Refuge, but that will not stop the damage coming through. That is a scary combination. I wonder, does the ult from Kled speed up if you run... Sorry, does the ult from Sion speed up if you run behind him? with Scion's ult, but in comes Zed, he wants to kill, he does flash, he gets the death mark on, one more auto will secure the kill, death mark comes through, and uh, yeah, that's um, he's just running, probably trying to get some damage onto the tower. The but, defensive uh, response from the rest of his team was really powerful, just Shen with the ulti to save Zed from any form of damage that Scion could do beyond death. Exactly right, and Shen's teleported, uh, Shen's come back to lane and uh, gotten himself a kill, so that's good. Kelvin is coming back, but in comes Zed. Zed is two hits from dead. He does go down. Zed does pick up the kill, so they do kill each other. But we are 
See, the one thing here is Calvin was well ahead. They're now about even. Only the 300 gold in it. This is where Elizabeth shined last game. Their Zed got, the Zed on the opposite team got ahead super early, but they managed to bring it down. Now it's Calvin who's ahead, but they need to hold this lead if they want to keep this series alive. They do, and looking at the gold accumulation between, you know, individually, got Shen is a little bit ahead. Vayne, on the other hand, is almost is about six to seven hundred gold ahead, and that's pretty much like you know two daggers straight then and then. That could be problematic, especially since it's a vein. Yeah, exactly when a vein right. starts building, it's only going to get more problematic because you know once she goes into her final hour, it's over. Yeah, exactly right. And speaking of final hours, this might be Silas' final hour. It does step a bit too close to the turret, and Shen does taunt him up. But there's also a fight in the bottom lane. The hook comes through. There is the Featherstorm gonna get ripped back. Massive damage. Rakan forced to flush away, but the Ignite secures it. The final hour not gonna be enough. And let's crank of all people picks up the double kill. And look at that. That's the difference between going back with the getting a build waters cutledge and coming back with the BF sword and boots. It's amazing how it's amazing how much just one item can make the bigger difference between two teams. The top lane, we've got some action going here, Iridescent. Yeah, they are gonna beat on each other, but this time, again, Shen's picking fights in minion waves, and it's not doing him any good. As the first tower goes down in favor of Calvin, this is what I want to see. Some life from this team. You know, they're here to have fun, but let's be honest, it's a competition. They want to win. And this is a good start. Cled and silence! Oh, here comes the pain train! And Shen, you can go, but nowhere when this comes after you! And he falls to that combo again! Oh, that's so... that's satisfying to watch. I do have to point out, the lack of wards coming from Elizabeth in game number 3. It's really not... it's really taking its toll on Shen. Like, Shen has died twice now, so Cled just ulting in from the middle of the river. And you see no wards. Exactly right. But this time Zed's come back, and it's a literal repeat of the last time that uh, Sion went down. Zed and Cho'Gath come back up, and they pick themselves up some kills. And, you know, here we go. Zed has gone for his Phage, so he's not going straight for his Yomu's or his Dustblade. It looks like he's going for that Cleaver first. So, unless he just wanted to phage for, phage for some health, but it's kind of an odd item to just partially buy this early. I can understand the motive behind pick, uh, picking it up instead of completing your first item straight off the bat. Because, you know, the Phage gives him health, it gives him damage, but the passive also gives him extra movement speed every time he attacks the target. So he can keep himself in the fray for as long as he wants, and then just, you know, when he's done, he just shadows out of it. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, look, Udi now, who started off really well, has is 4 and 2 compared to the Cho'Gath, who's one and one, but here comes Blitzcrank, and he's... behind, but it's okay, because uh, Minion Waves do a pretty good job. Shen is now down close to his bottom line, so I'm assuming we're gonna see it. No, we're not gonna see them swap out, so Shen's gonna recall. But Kled and Sion, as well as Udi, are on this top side. Now, they're getting Rift Herald, but they can probably get this Rift Herald. Like, it's about half health now. And still get top lane before Shen makes it back. And uh, a... considering Shen stayed bottom lane, it's going down. But uh, speaking, yeah, Zaya, you're going down. There's going to be that one last semi range auto attack from Rakan picking it up. So uh, there should really be a quote for if Zaya kills Rakan. That'd be fine. Or vice versa. But there is not one. And he is actually going to teleport back to lane and save it. So Shen has done a pretty good job here. He's done well, but now, now Udi's here, and he's just gonna run and beat the tower. Shen, you've got no hope. You're just adding another to that uh, to that death column. But speaking of death columns, Zed picks up a nice solo kill. Oh, not a solo kill, my bad. Nice kill in the mid lane with the help of Cho'Gath. He's doing, he's doing really well to keep himself in the fray, and just getting as many kills as possible. Gain that lead against Kled. I mean, he's already at 5,100 compared to 4,700. <clears throat> he's got just three kills on its own. Well, good to Zed gets grabbed, and he's going to get back to his shadow with not much health after that ignite. Oh. One thing I do want to mention is the jungle deficit. He's going to be flashing over with the stand united coming through. Sion gets caught in the middle of nowhere. But this is a one level advantage here for Udi. But he is forgetting the ultimate from Cho'Gath, but it is not up. So the flash coming over is going to go down the dots. From, I'm not quite sure what that was, or if the auto attack went through before the flash. 
but he does fall down on the other side of the wall. A little note to take in from that. Udyr's Q, uh, Tiger Stance, actually puts in a dot on the enemy. Speaking of dots, uh, R uh, Vayne and Rakan are now dots of skulls on the map for at least the <laughs> next couple of seconds. I I am surprised. Like I feel like there was no real need really to put in a play by play moment right there. That was just over way too quickly. Like yeah, but it was funny. And now Udi's gonna drop drop the retail mid. So Calvin, they're making this this Cled mid work. He's really the backbone of the team. He's moving around the map well. Of course, these top laners they just really like beating the crap out of each other. But uh, this time it is going to be the world of Shen. He's going to, well, in theory, win this one. Uh, the slow. That slow it goes for so long. And it's so upsetting when you get hit by it when you're chasing a kill. But uh, down in the bottom lane, Glenn, we do see Calvin pushing in and now retreating to make me look stupid. They are retreating. It looks like Udyr wants to claim this dragon uncontested. We see a response happening from both Blitz and Zaya. I like that they're all retreating because it gives them a bit more comfortable it gives them a little bit more comfortability able to get those objectives where they see fit they want to get them without any contesting like they don't want elizabeth college to be able to try anything like last game elizabeth college took a lot from them and you know they managed to claim game number one relatively easily and in game number two they want to put them you know in a bit of a spa they want to show them that they are no pushover calvin calvin christian want to show their skill and they're really beginning to shine in game number two just so far Kled is doing amazing yeah Kled is putting in work his scoreline doesn't really reflect how much of an impact he has had but also one very important thing just happened with the fall of that dragon and calvin has broken their habit of leashing for the enemy team they've got a dragon make that two dragons under their belt now my apologies i must have missed the earlier uh, ocean drake but a turret is taken in reply, so vain, and that, but, uh, Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath, you're gonna get caught out, but gonna be turned around, Rakan is chubbing everybody up with the grand entrance, Vayne is doing damage, she's kiting back, Clem is chasing, but that's gonna be a bad call, meanwhile, Zaya, the team is just getting ripped to shreds, the heal, Blitzkrieg gets sidestepped, Vayne picks up the triple, the quadra for Vayne, the outplays, Elizabeth are pulling it back! Whoa, I am just absolutely blown away. Well, the powerful turnaround for by, by face attack and who's getting? Just the sidestepping and everything was amazing. Get and out. Luckily, we've got some action happening. They're just trading off against each other repeatedly. It's, I, I'm really happy to see how much Shen is trying to make a comeback for this. I'm working. Over in the top end, over just... From that right there, both teams managed to reset. Zed and Vayne, specifically, have actually managed to create quite the comeback for Elizabeth. Elizabeth might be able to take this away. Exactly right. Elizabeth have brought themselves back into this match, and as Zed goes down, you know, Calvin are doing their best to prove that they're not out of this fight. Oh, Sion forcing the flash behind his turret, or just before his turret, really puts him in a safe position, and he's able to continue fighting. Yeah, but he's dead now anyway, looks of it. Never mind, Shen may have bitten off more than he can chew. It is here to clean up the smite, as well as the Spirit Rush is going to come down, keep it a little bit longer. But oh. Udi does get the kill this time around, and we are going to see a hold in the mid lane. Now, the big, big scary Vayne is here, and that is going to be the priority target for Kelvin. They take out Vayne, that's all they really have now. You know, 0-6 on the top lane, 1-3 and 3 in the jungle, 1-3 and 3 on the support. You know, it's not going fantastic, for Elizabeth, because all their gold is in the hands of just the 180 carry. You gotta hand it to Shen. He did well to survive for that. Especially when he popped uh, his W and just getting that, you know, denial of basic attacks going for a little bit. It was a little bit unnecessary, you know, to try to have that shield pop, but and, he tried uh, his best. Calvin pulls a Rakan in and instantly gets altered. He's gonna be flush on the side, so Vayne's gonna be hammering away on Blitz, but that's okay because Zed does get out. Blitz will eventually fall, but in the last second gives Vayne a little bit of a boost, pulls him into the fight, and here she comes, and she is looking for blood. Zion gonna be running away, but gonna fall down to Rakan this time around. Zion, you're going to die one more time, and this Vayne is saying, come on, get on my back, I will carry. 
a very powerful turnaround. It looks like we're really beginning to who the power plays are going to be for each team. Like, we've got very powerful gameplays from who's getting. Like, he's really getting it on. He's really shining. Playing that vein, he's really coming in line. This is what I mean by, you know, those champion picks. You know, they're really trying to play around each other. And Elizabeth, they may have had a really early bad startup, but they're really making a comeback. Like, they're almost about to just completely align themselves with the turrets. They've gotten two. They're going for their third. Not much contesting at the moment. Yeah, the issue is is that Blitzcrank is pulling the wrong targets and they're not using their team shot. Sure, Blitzcrank doesn't let himself is AD carry a kill on the Shen, which is pretty good. But here we go. Here comes the big charge, but it's poorly aimed and he finds nobody and now he's kind of alone. But Zyra's walking up with a very odd build. But that's not a big issue because the flash forward comes through. Kelvin picks up a kill for himself. Oh. Two kills in matter of fact. They go in a matter of seconds. And Kelvin like, well, you know what? Your AD carry is good, but our AD carry is not too shabby herself. And now they want the turret in reply. But I don't think it's going to happen. The well, There's a wave coming, so possible. But they've also got... They're pressuring two lanes here. So they can get at least one, surely. Shogarth is doing well to try and defend the mid turret. He's... To no avail, is it that really is, helping him too much? It will. In the bottom lane. In, in the bottom lane, Zed actually almost goes down, but look, Chogath is tanking up some damage. Zaya is yet to get an Infinity Edge, so she hasn't quite got that true damage. So she's not going to quite get through him that quickly, but they do get the bottom lane and a good, good chunk on that mid lane. Now, Baron is up. Baron is the next free objective you would be looking to take. Of course, Dragon is just about 30 seconds away. But no, neither team has vision on either of these objectives. So, who's it going to go to? I'm not really sure, but at the moment, I was about to make a special mention about the warding that we're, we're sort of seeing a lack thereof. There's very minimal water happening for both sides. We see some red wards covered from Elizabeth College, but that's only in their own jungle. They're beginning to try and show the objectives a little bit more, but... You know, Udi is already there, and he's just really showing him how much of a tiger he can be. Yeah, exactly right, and he does take a little bit of unnecessary damage, but they're going to clear out some vision now. But there is still that ward in the dot bush. But here comes Sion. He's going straight for the vein, and he gets his target. The rest of the team is coming, but is it too late? Steve United comes through on the back line. Vein is big and doing damage. Jed goes down first, but Vayne again is still alive in that back line. More damage, but aiming for the wrong targets. This crack was the one aimed for. She's nearly now dead, but it's not going to matter. The shutdown goes down. Zaya falls. Vayne's job is done. Skull can go nowhere, and they're pinging out Baron. Yeah, chasing after Kled with that Righteous Fury active, and then just popping it to get, you know, to try and close the gap on Kled. It was absolutely amazing by Fennekin, and it really works because now they're about to... Now, it looks like they might be able to get it uncontested. Kled's yeah, it's going to be free. Alive, and it's going to be pretty is... much free. Yeah, and Kled kind of... has ult, so, I mean, he can try, I guess. He doesn't have smite or anything, but he goes in, and he actually does almost get a kill. He actually does! No, very close. Almost takes out Vayne, which would have been good because the rest of his team are now coming back up. So, but it doesn't quite avail. So he goes down for no real reason. Should have just let that one go over. Now his now his revive is 25 seconds behind the rest of his team. I'm, I feel the same as you on that one. Like, he should have just let that one go. Like, not only did he let them have it, but he also gave them a kill. On and just the amount of pa the power play from O-Sticks playing as Rakan. Just getting those double bubbles onto Vayne to try and keep her alive for as long as possible. I'm absolutely... I'm... I'm I guess you could say I'm a little bit stunned. I'm still trying to absorb what happened, but I really like how how effective he was in trying to keep his ADC alive. And as a support, that's your major focus. Exactly right. But the whole team effort, it wasn't just, you know, the, the jump shields coming from Rakan. It was the Stand United, everything to keep that vein as safe as possible in the faith that she will deliver. And now at nine and three, she's delivered. And uh, Sion... Yeah, he's gonna flash and all the way. There's the old Scion trick. Goodbye. But if they do give over another turret, Vayne getting more gold, more CS. Zaya only just now coming out of base, and they're all gonna rally to defend this inner uh, this inner turret in the top lane. But against Baron, it's gonna be a hard ask. Taking a second to just sort of drag ourselves away from what's happening, you know, on the map. The gold accumulation between both teams, the ADCs. Zaya's only at ten thousand. 
Vayne is at 12,500 and the gap is only getting bigger. Things are looking very, very, you know, very dim for, you know, Calvin Christian Ooh, once again. Not Cho'Gath, you don't want to be pulling that Cho'Gath under turret. This leaves Sion on the side all alone. Zed does all, oh, but Clegg is on the back line. Cho'Gath very nearly doesn't to die, but there go Vayne, she's playing this fight immaculately, dodging everything, getting out, picking up the kills. One more auto, and he's actually going to be flash stolen by Shen. That doesn't matter, <laughs> because Vayne has done the work carrying their school. This is going to be a hard ass to stop now. This is going to be at least a turret inhibitor, if not two. It could be very close, the game. I mean, we do have 15 seconds minimum on the clock from Calvin, uh, from Calvin Christian. They're going to try and go for the win. They are really pushing it. Exactly right. So we see them push up now. They're going to get this at least one base turret. The team They're going to go for it. Blitzcrank is coming, but here comes the big Sion train. Actually does his head. Yeah, oh my god, he's living on a slither of health. But Vayne's water is up there again. Next to another kill. One more auto will do the damage. Sion is left running the heal for movement speed. But does get a bit overzealous. Vayne doesn't matter. She doesn't care. She's got one more kill, but she does eventually fall down. Oh. One more in him to go. Sion is still up. Zed, you're going to die. Um, that was a bit silly, but Zed died. He actually did pick up the kill on Sion, so he got something. But that is Zaya. There is only the Sion passive left. That is the ace, and that is the game, and I believe the series. That is the series. Just Elizabeth College proving to be a very powerful contender, just taking game to one flawlessly. In game number two, they really made a comeback. Just things were looking dim. And just from that one team fight that happened in the bot lane, where Zed and Vayne just took it away by claiming four kills for their team, it's this is the ending result. This is this is why I live for this stuff. This is amazing. Exactly right. And you know, it's always painful to see a Vayne get a multi kill. It's very painful when it's one kill away from a Penta. And it's even more painful when that multi kill leads to the downfall of the game. And as we look at this, the amount of damages coming out of these players. Vayne absolutely carrying 33,000 damage. The next highest was Zaya with 23. So 10,000 more damage? That's insane. It's incredibly insane, and especially since a lot of Vayne's kit is, you know, every third attack, she does true damage based on maximum health. So it just... That's 33,000 raw damage right there. Like, if we break it down, a lot of it cannot be negated. So well done to her right there. With the conclusion of this series, I do have to give a couple, I do have to make a couple special announcements. Firstly, I need to thank the teachers for once again participating in the entire series, being the support behind their teams and giving them the encouragement and inspiration to keep going. A second mention to the teams themselves for playing this entire series. Without you guys playing, this would not have been possible. The USEL staff, very special thank you as well to you guys for being able to, you know, come up with this, come up with this entire, you know, coming up with this entire event, this entire system, and you know, broadening the cate broadening the pro series to, you know, people of more age categories. So it's like, you know, it's becoming more and more of a, of you know, of a worldwide, you know, sport for everyone. Like, you know, everyone can get involved, and. We have to give a, I guess we could say um, thank you to you so, uh, to you viewers as well for watching us. Like, you know, with we need this. This is the type of support we need. You know, the more we try and get this out there, the more people that get interested, the more successful, you know, League of Legends for high school series will be able to, you know, continue growing. And exactly like right. That. Exactly right, Reinhardt. And, you know, a massive thank you to HS, uh, HSEL, the teachers, the students who put their name downs to play in these tournaments, even the ones that weren't, you know, particularly confident or were still new to the game, put their name down, played a couple of games and enjoyed themselves with friends. You know, thank you to everyone involved. It's been a fantastic, fantastic run. I had a great time casting this game, and I'm sure you did too, Reinhardt. I absolutely did. Like, I, I love casting. It fun it keeps you alive and you learn more yeah exactly right you know we we learn every game and it's always good to see you know these types of game kids you know eventually we're going to be old men and we're not going to be casting or playing league of legends anymore but these kids will be 
And so, uh, again, one massive thank you to all involved, especially the teachers in the schools for allowing this to happen. Thank you all for watching, and that's good night from us. The brisk, chilling air is calling And out there we're free To run and jump and live so wildly Head first we'll go tumbling Through places unknown With nothing but the stars to light our way And though the sun may set at night Tomorrow will look so bright Cause home, home Is when you're by my side No matter what we do Together we'll say it through And I hope That we won't drift apart Even though things change Without you it's not the same